most, if not everyone on this webinar has got pensions, even if they're, you know, distant, in the background, um, not part of their uh, specific wealth planning, or certainly they feel like, you know, they want it to be, but they're not sure how. Um, you know, it's the asset that almost everyone in the UK who's of working age, certainly nowadays has, because of course the law changed back in 2012 and meant that any business that employed people who earned over a sort of minimum threshold had to provide them with a pension unless that person opted out. And that's the auto enrollment point there. So, you know, auto enrollment has been around now for, for 10 years. Um, people have been paying into pensions and having their employers or their businesses pay into pensions for many, many years. And, you know, the default place for pensions for most people, as we often describe it, Chris, is, is in the filing cabinet, right? You know, the statement comes in through the letterbox or, or nowadays, I guess, more commonly on email and you open it and you either wince or you smile or something in between and then you file it away and you wait for the next one. Which is why, sadly, the average pension pot in the UK right now is less than £100,000, which is a shockingly low figure when you consider that most people um, in the UK and across the world, actually, in many cases, are completely reliant on their pension as, in some cases, their sole, court, sole source of future income and wealth. And what's even more shocking is that, sadly, women have even less on average. It's about half of what an average men's pension pot is worth. So, you know, you, we see the same problems, you know, week in and week out with, with people who are disconnected from their pension, um, largely because they don't understand it or they don't understand how to make it work harder and smarter for them. And, you know, ironically, pensions, um, despite uh, what the government would hope you believe are getting simpler, actually, probably things are getting a bit more complicated, or at least that's the way they feel to a lot of people. So, you know, in the end, what you tend to find is, is the head in the sand syndrome. Um, and of course, that's the worst thing that you could do. So the focus of today is to try and go through the five biggest and most common mistakes and, and just try and find some simple ways to fix some of those things. Um, and again, with a goal of creating more wealth in your pension, which in turn then creates more sustainable income when you get to your uh, the age at which you want to start tapping into your uh, your pension wealth, which at the moment is 55, but won't be too many years uh, until it increases to 57. Um, so the minimum age for people tapping into their uh, their own pensions will be 57. Um, so should we start with problem number one then, Chris? Okay. Okay, that's probably the thing that we see the most. You know, this is the default position for most people in pensions. And, and the problem here is a complete over-reliance on the stock market. Now, stock market is bread and butter for pensions, and it always has been. You know, anyone who thinks about pensions probably thinks about stock market first and foremost. Um, but as you've probably all seen or even experienced at certain points in your life, the stock market is an incredibly volatile place and it's fraught with risk. And all investments have risk, of course, but it's a risk that can't really be controlled. There are some measures that you can take, and we'll talk about those in a second, to try and mitigate the risks of the stock market. But you know, the real problem here is that most people rely solely on the stock market um, for their pensions and also sometimes for, for other investments, you know, the investment pillar too, um, to, to produce wealth. And it's not a sustainable way of producing wealth and a sustainable way of producing income because of the volatility. To illustrate that point, we talk about the rule of five and three. And you can see there from the chart on the right that if the average return in the UK for a stock market based pension, and there's a lot of science to back this up, 
ranges between about five and six percent per annum gross and that means before fees there's a very simple method of working out well if your average return is five percent what's the upper return you're likely to get but what's the likely biggest downturn so you know in a really really fantastically strong buoyant year in the stock market the rule of five and three means that your average return would give you, uh, sorry, the, the maximum return you could get would be roughly five times the average. And the maximum loss you would face in any one year, this is 95% of the time, it's not 100%, it's 95% of the time, would be three times your average. So if your average was 5% a year in a fantastic year, you could see individual growth of 25%, which is brilliant. But in a bad year, you could very easily lose 15%. And if you're not careful, all of the gains you've created in the period up to that point are then significantly eroded. Um, so establishing what your risk profile is and understanding how tolerant you are to risk and understanding that, you know, when you get towards the highest end of the risk spectrum where the stock markets are concerned, the the margins of how much extra you can eke out of your pension on an average return are diminished by the potential significantly large returns or, or sorry, um, downsides that you could see in a bad year. So, you know, I suppose that combination of not really understanding the risk that you're taking, not really having a way of measuring it, and a combination of either delegating your wealth management, your stock market management completely, or, or, you know, as it says there, abdicating and just simply not taking responsibility is, is almost certainly the biggest problem that we see in pensions.